What is the genetic history of Portugal and how has this shaped the DNA of Portuguese people today? Now the word Portugal is derived from the Roman Celtic place name Portus Cali, as I note in my video on the Celtic origins of Portugal and Spain. We know that Portus is the Latin word for port, but Cali is likely Celtic in origin and could come from the Caleche, also known as the Galeche, who were a Celtic tribal complex who inhabited the northwest corner of the Iberian Peninsula. But there are other theories on where Cali comes from. It could come from an ancient Celtic goddess, for instance, known as Cala, who could be related to a Gaelic goddess who is associated with the weather, especially storms in winter. In Scotland, she is known as Beera, Queen of Winter. It is no surprise that we Scots have a Queen of Winter, given the weather we get. Anyway, now let's look at the genetic history of Portugal, a country that produced one of the greatest footballers in the history of the game, Cristiano Ronaldo. As a Man United fan, I had to get that in, and Cristiano Ronaldo has actually just started his own YouTube channel that has broke all sorts of records, been the fastest channel to reach 1 million subscribers in just 90 minutes, and 10 million in just one day. I wish my YouTube channel grew that fast. So as far as the ancient genetic history of the land we call Portugal today, I'm not going to go into too much detail, as basically it's quite similar to other Western European countries, and I don't want to labour the point for anyone that's seen any previous videos in this series. As a general overview though, the ancient genetic history of the land we call Portugal today was comprised of Western hunter-gatherers, then Anatolian Neolithic farmers, and then steppe ancestry during the Bronze Age that's connected to the Yamnaya culture. I will go into a little detail though on this last component, the steppe component, and an ancient culture that's connected to the spread of the steppe ancestry into Western Europe and Britain and Ireland as well, the Belbeaker culture, that are named after the shape of the pottery that was moulded into the shape of inverted bells, and these were often buried with their dead. This pottery first appeared on the Iberian Peninsula, but within less than 100 years, it has spread across much of Western and Central Europe and into Britain and Ireland, as well as reaching parts of Europe such as Sardinia and Sicily, in addition to parts of Northern Africa. The bell beakers are dated from around 2800 to 2300 BC in continental Europe when they were replaced by the unitized culture, but they lasted until around 1800 BC in Britain. Now these bell beaker people and this steppe ancestry had a profound impact on the genetics of Portugal, a legacy that is still felt to today that we'll see later in this video. Although the bell beaker culture in general had varying levels of steppe ancestry depending on the region and the time etc, steppe ancestry was still a core component of bell beaker DNA. This ancestry is connected to migrations from the Pontic Caspian steppe associated with the Yamnaya culture, beginning around 5000 years ago. As one study published in 2019 looked at, the genomic history of the Iberian Peninsula over the past 8,000 years described how the steppe ancestry almost completely changed the Y chromosomes of males in the land we call Portugal today. From the Bronze Age, we show how steppe ancestry from the Pontic Caspian steppe appeared throughout Iberia in this period. Y chromosome turnover was even more pronounced. As the lineages common in Copper Age Iberia, I2, G2 and H were almost completely replaced by one lineage, R1B M269. These patterns point to a higher contribution of incoming males than females as well. So the introduction of this steppe ancestry during the Bronze Age was a key feature of that age, but what about later migrations during the Iron Age for instance? What genetic impact did they have on the land we call Portugal today? Well, during this time there was an increase in ancestry related to northern and central European populations, with this level of increase estimated to be around 10 to 19 percent. This migration has been associated with the Urnfield culture, a late Bronze Age people of central Europe that get their name from their custom of cremating their dead and placing their ashes in urns, which they then buried in fields. The Urnfield people were succeeded by the Holstatt culture, and it was shortly after this time that we see the rise of Celtic peoples across Iberia as well, as I note in my video on the Celtic origins of Portugal and Spain. The Romans soon conquered Iberia, however, taking a few hundred years due to the fierce resistance by many Celtic tribes, but they had completed their conquest by 19 BC. Now before we move on to look at the genetic impact of the Romans on ancient Portugal, I should note that a few other ancient cultures around this time, and slightly before as well, um, such as the Phoenicians, the Greeks and the Carthaginians, had some influence on ancient Portugal. They had established some trading relationships for instance, 
And in fact, when we look at the etymology of the word Lisbon itself, the capital of Portugal, although there is some debate, ancient Latin and Greek authors referred to popular legends in their day that said Lisbon was founded by the mythical hero Odysseus, the hero of Homer's epic poem, The Odyssey. Another theory is that the name Lisbon could be traced back to the Phoenicians, referring to a supposed Phoenician term, Alish Yubu, meaning safe harbour. Other theories argue Lisbon has a Celtic or Proto-Celtic origin, coming from an ancient place name, Olisipo. Regardless of the precise meaning, we know that the Phoenicians, the Greeks and the Carthaginians had some impact on the ancient history of Portugal, and perhaps a very small genetic impact on the ancient genetics of Portugal, something we're going to see a little later in the video. But what about the Romans? Well, during the Roman period, it seems that the ancestry of Iberia shifted to the east, in the direction of present-day Italians and Greeks. After the Western Roman Empire collapsed in the 5th century AD, it was the turn of Germanic peoples to control large parts of Iberia, notably the Visigoths. These people brought a little northern and central European ancestry into Iberia, but they did not have a major lasting genetic impact. Now what about Portugal's more modern genetic history? Well, beginning in the 8th century AD, Muslim rulers controlled large parts of the Iberian Peninsula, and this Muslim rule lasted for centuries, ending with the conquest of the Emirate of Granada in 1492. This period is associated with the introduction of North African ancestry into Iberia, but what is interesting about this North African ancestry is that it does not correlate with parts of Iberia that are geographically closest to North Africa. A 2019 study that looked at the genetic makeup of the Iberian Peninsula found that this North African ancestry is highest in the west of Iberia, in places such as Portugal and Galicia in the very northwest corner of Spain. And in fact, this study found that Portugal and Galicia are genetically very similar to each other, perhaps reflecting historical migration patterns and gene flow between the regions down through history. In general, when looking at the Iberian Peninsula as a whole, this 2019 study found that there was a remarkable genetic similarity running vertically across the peninsula, with the main genetic differences running horizontally. As far as other genetic influences on Portugal, there are small amounts of Sephardic Jewish ancestry as well, a legacy of the time before many Jews were expelled from Portugal and Spain following the Reconquista in the 15th century. But what about the modern genetics of Portugal? What haplogroups groups are most common amongst its people? And how do they speak to the historical migrations and invasions that we went through in this video? Well, the most common Y-DNA haplogroup group in Portugal today is R1B. In particular, R1B M269. And this is a clear legacy of the introduction of steppe ancestry during the Bronze Age and the Belbeaker people. Around 60% of Portuguese males carry this R1B haplogroup. group, with some estimates putting this number even higher than this. Another Y-DNA haplogroup found in Portugal is E1B1B, which is much less common than R1B, but still notable at perhaps around 5-15%. to This haplogroup is very common in North Africa, and is a genetic legacy of the Muslim period in Portugal. Another Y-DNA haplogroup found in Portugal is Jai, both Jai 2 and Jai 1 with Jai 2 reflecting ancient Mediterranean influences, including Greek, Phoenician and Roman settlement. Other haplogroups that are less common in Portugal include I1, I2 and G amongst others. On the maternal side, variations of the mitochondrial haplogroup H, H1, H3, H5 etc. are the most common, similar to other parts of Western Europe and parts of Scandinavia. Other mitochondrial haplogroups found in Portugal include U, K, T2 and J, but they are at lower rates compared to H, with subclads of K, such as K1A, 1B1A, linked to Sephardic Jewish ancestry. As far as the general population structure of Portugal, and as I noted earlier in this video, Portugal and Galicia are genetically very similar to each other, and the Iberian Peninsula in general has a remarkable genetic similarity running vertically up and down, and the main divisions run horizontally. So as we've seen, Portugal has a fascinating genetic history that speaks to many historical migrations and invasions. But what is the genetic history of a land just next to it? Spain. To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below as well. And if you have Portuguese ancestry, and I'll see you next time.